The Legend of Zelda is one of the most beloved game franchises of all time, known for its rich storyline, memorable characters, and immersive world. In recent years, the series has embraced the open world formula, allowing players to explore vast lands and complete quests in any order they see fit. While this approach has been successful, there are reasons why the next Zelda game shouldn't stick with the open world formula. One of the biggest issues with the open world formula is that it can lead to repetitive gameplay. While it's true that the player has the freedom to explore the world at their own pace, this freedom can also come with a lack of direction and purpose. Without clear objectives, the player can easily find themselves wandering aimlessly or completing the same tasks over and over again. Another issue with open world games is that they can be overwhelming for new players. With so much to explore and do, it can be difficult to know where to start or what to focus on. This can lead to frustration and disengagement. As the player feels like they're not making progress or achieving anything meaningful. Finally, the open world formula can limit the potential for innovative game mechanics. When the focus is on exploration, there's less room for creative puzzles unique combat scenarios, or other mechanics that could make the game stand out. While some open-world games do manage to incorporate these elements, it can be challenging to balance them with the freedom to explore. Ultimately, the next Zelda game should consider breaking away from the open-world formula to explore new game mechanics and offer a more focused experience. By doing so, the game can deliver a more engaging and rewarding experience one that captures the spirit of the franchise while still pushing boundaries. Whether this means a return to a more linear story or a hybrid approach that blends open-world exploration with more structured gameplay, the possibilities are endless. <laughs> that, ladies and gentlemen, is an AI-generated video with an AI-generated script where all I did was put in the subject or in the topic, I mean, of why Zelda shouldn't be open-world anymore. For the most part, like, I think the script was better than the first time I did this a couple months ago, but the video I was dying at because there was no Zelda images whatsoever. We had Mario and we had a PlayStation Move, and I'm like, what? But then you see where they, I say open world and then the AI just runs with a bunch of globes and maps and stuff, which I think was hilarious. I do think the script made some good points though. And I do want to talk about some of those points. I mean, there's mainly just two things I want to talk about. I mean, I'm going to make this kind of quick, but the player does feel overwhelmed. And I do agree with the fact that I did feel that way. When I played Tears of the Kingdom and I'm running around the surface and trying to figure out what I need to do and how I can 100% this game and like make like how I should organize my thoughts to make the videos for you guys when I was doing all that stuff. It was overwhelming because there was so much to do. There was bubble gems and caves. There were all the shrines. I don't think they were called shrines, but we'll run with that. Uh, there was <laughs> like the sky. There was the depths. There was the Korok seeds. There were all the different challenges, or not like the, not the challenges, but the monster medals and everything. Like, and then, yeah, take all the different shops, like the Poe shop, and they, there was a lot. Yeah. Bottom line, there was so much to do that I felt very like, oh, well, what should I do first? How should I go about this? And what order should I go in? And like, I, I didn't mind it because it gave me a lot of content to, make but it did take a while to do it because it's not like i i have all the time in the world like we don't all have the time in the world to do all this stuff 24 7 right so i just thought that was a good point one of the points i didn't agree with was the fact that the game was repetitive and i mean in a way it was because same map and everything but i mean i don't really see that as a bad point because of the fact that it was a sequel and it's pretty much an excuse that we can use because it was a sequel so the map was going to be the same but there was also so much variation in the map that it didn't really matter the abilities were different the fuse thing like there's so many things that nintendo made sure that wasn't repetitive with the gameplay that i do think that's a point against it or at least the argument I would say. Personally for me, I did like the story for Tears of the Kingdom. I thought it was really well done. 
I don't really like how Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom present the story, and since we have voice acting, the story isn't as complex and it's kind of more dumbed down for a younger audience just so they can understand what the heck's going on, and that's the reason why I don't want the next... Well, that's kind of part of the reason why I don't want the next Zelda game to be open world. I want the next Zelda game to be kind of semi-open world so they, they can have more structured story and it's not just a generic overlay for maybe like 50% of the game where you're running into all these dungeons and dungeons I want actual dungeons <laughs> like actual puzzle solving that's incorporated when we're doing the dungeons like we could go the link link between worlds route and just rent our items so we have everything off the rip and just do anything in any order and that doesn't affect the story element at all but i mean i digress on that front but yeah i there's just so many things that like i'm i I, I found myself more of a traditional zelda player i mean i've always loved zelda so for me it's not, not really that big of a deal to be like oh i love on korea time oh i love one way oh twilight princess skyward sword a link to the past a link between worlds i mean i even like uh, i mean this wasn't a traditional Zelda game by any means, but Triforce Heroes was great, in my opinion. I never played the Tingle games because those are all Japan exclusives, but Majora's Mask was great. Like, I'm just an overall fan. I'm not really, like, I'm getting open world fatigue, and this is why I don't want Zelda to continue down this rabbit hole because it's just, oh, how many collectibles are there? Oh, okay. Oh, this is cool. Like, yeah, it's cool in the moment, but like, it gets old quick, especially when every game is pushing out open world content now. And it's like, please just stop. Please make something new. That's just, that's all I want. <laughs> Well, I mean, and that's pretty much all I really have to say. I do want to say I plan on doing more Zelda-based content in the future, whether it be, like, I want to play Twilight Princess HD, Wind Waker HD, if I ever get Nintendo Switch Online, like, the expansion pack that we can do Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, but, uh, yeah, I mean... I haven't done any of that yet, only because we're rumored to be getting more Zelda later this year, whether that be just an announcement. If it's an announcement and we have to wait a little bit, that's fine, because I mean, we still gotta play Super Mario RPG, but I wanna wait for whatever, if that rumor is true or not, because that double pack has been rumored for a long time, and I've been putting it off just because of that, and I would like to actually play those and maybe maybe do like a let's play or, or whatever with that as for the rest of this video let me know what you guys think the direction of zelda should go in and whether or not it should be open world or not and give me some reasons why you think that way so we can have like a discussion about it so that's pretty much it i'm your host 1hp tom make sure you like comment and subscribe if you want to see more from me and i will see you guys in the next one see ya